have fun this weekend. This is, uh, this. I uh, hopefully this is as much for you as it is for the fans that you get to come back and have some fun. There's no pressure. It's one of the few times you can go racing in your life that you didn't have a, a whole lot of stress on you to perform. This is really more about having fun. What's it like for you guys to be back here again and see each other and be involved in this? Let's just start with that. It's kind of a cliche phrase for all of us now, but every time we come under the tunnel, you know, and look at this place, it's, it's, it's like uh, religious, you know. It's, uh, me, like uh, some other guys have raised Formula One, Le Mans, World Rally, Dakar, everything, but there's nothing like this place. I've said it many times, and it's going to be the case again tomorrow. And series three drivers, what, what better? Last year, I think we were 24, 25. This year, series three, the magic number, what, what better way? If I was to be a judge, who's changed the most in the last 10 to 15 years? I would say Darren Manning is the one that's, <laughs> that's the hardest one to figure out. <laughs> I know, because he, 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 I am not bald. No, somebody, somebody. I'm not fast. It's just the way I'm sitting. Yeah, I'm honored to be, to be a part of this. Uh, I was excited when, when Tony gave me the call. Um, you know, the Speedway is really something special. When, when, you're, when you're a racer, when you're in the game, playing the game, it's just another race, you know, and, 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 and you know, when you fit, once you finish up the month of May here at Indy, um, you know, you go on and, and you go on to the next event. And I think now that time has gone by, you realize more what a great opportunity we all had and how special this place really is. In 1987, we finished uh, sixth running out of fuel during the race. And I remember Al Unser Sr., when I would pass him on the back straight going into three, he'd wave at me and smile, say, I know you can't make up that many laps. Go for it, Dick. <laughs> and and uh, I, I know I had my opportunity during all those years, and I know that uh, the good Lord just didn't see that it happened. Uh, but just being here and having those opportunities and finishing sixth and where I did finish a few times, uh, and having the pleasure to help as many people along the way as we did. As I look through this group of drivers right here, I can say that I engineered some of them as an engineer. I competed with them, and they drove for us, as a, and I was the owner, my wife and I. So I can really say that if you look back in my life, this place has been my life. And today, this, this is probably one of the sweetest things for me to do, and that's to come here and be a part of this program. I th thank you all very much. Yeah, if, if you were a rookie with Dick Simon, hold up your hands, please. Okay, and I, I don't know if this ever ended, but I know for the longest time you had this amazing record. You never had a rookie not make it the first time. That held up the whole time. Great, okay then, very good. What Tony has been doing and what this kind of, this kind of event is doing is a lot more than just uh, coming and drive a car. For a kid like me that was uh, dreaming about uh, Indianapolis 500, dreaming about these guys, to even have a chance uh, to get to be in the same room and get to meet all these people. Uh, this is what it's all about. For me, uh, I was texting my wife before and saying, you know, can you believe that uh, I read the name of all these guys, that, uh, you know, who we are with and how far we came. So it's, uh, I really love the fact that uh, these events, they are, there is a chance for people that maybe they never met each other to, you know, to share each other's thoughts. So we're on the poll, we come to the press conference like this, it was pretty interesting, and they're asking, you know, all the same kind of questions. And uh, finally somebody asked me, well, God, how'd you spend that time all day waiting to see if those other 50 cars were gonna bump you off the pole? And um, this was about the time that engineers first became a popular term, you know, they used to be chief mechanics and mechanics, and then all of a sudden they became engineers. And so I told him I was uh, over at Hurtabee's garage talking to the consumption engineer. And these guys are all writing this down real serious. I get a couple more other questions, and finally somebody raised their hand, what's a consumption engineer? And I said, well, that's the bartender over at Hurtabee's garage. So. I mean, the, this place is very special to myself and our whole family, and it's really neat that uh, uh, special thanks to Tony Perella for putting all this together. I mean, you can imagine the headache he has 
at night dealing with all of us. It's just got to be amazing. So um, it's neat. We uh, Dad and Uncle Al will be in here a little bit later today, so just a warning to everybody. Um, but uh, we're very honored to be here, as we always are, in the state of Indiana at this great racetrack. And uh, we look forward to, to having a great time. Johnny joined us this year, so hopefully it'll, uh, it'll be a little bit fun out there. We had a great time last year, and, and you know, with with getting out and running and, and racing with all these guys like, like like we have done before in the past, it's great to uh, to be able to at 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 our age to get a call to run at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and uh, for myself, I I jumped at it and and then uh, and then to go walk the paddock and and see all the different kinds of cars here from from the pre-war stuff to to the modern day stuff the can-am cars the trans-am cars the indy cars the the formula ones the dirt cars it's just fantastic to uh, to see all this stuff and and uh, and then you know uh, it was a shame that uh, that the rain stopped us from from all getting out there and and uh, putting a few dents in the fenders. I want to tell you a little story about uh, Al Jr. It's Max. Oh, okay, yeah. I just want to tell you a little story that I, I think it will surprise him. Okay. So I came to U.S., you know, I've never driven an oval before, and uh, who do I go? You know, I go, you know, talk to, you know, Al Jr., because he's the king of the ovals. I'm out there at Michigan, you know, so I woke up early, go to his motorhome. He had a motorhome I came, I was in the, you know, Ann Arbor Holiday Inn. Drive in, go there, he's preparing breakfast. He makes this uh, eggs and he puts, he fills them up with uh, jalapeno. I eat, never had jalapeno, I'm Italian, you know. We, we, we don't have that kind of stuff there. So I eat this stuff, no problem. The next two days, big problem. So, that was probably his grandmother's recipe, probably. I don't. I he. Will, I, I remember very clearly. You know, I had tears coming down like this. Anyway, I every every time I went back, I avoided you know the omelette and whatever thing with jalapeno. But I said you know, because the guy is that bad, much of a badass guy on oval, so every time I went on an oval on Sunday before the race, I always made sure I had eggs with jalapeno. <laughs> I did, the, the Tuesday was a tragedy, Monday and Tuesday, but it worked pretty good because I learned how to drive on the oval and uh, I never told him that. But uh, I still remember him cooking uh, this stuff and telling me about uh, how to hold the steering wheel, how to do that and how to do that. And, uh, I, I think it worked pretty good. You know, I learned quite a lot. My first time uh, coming here, uh, I was actually, I was racing sprint cars with the World of Outlaws and uh, we were going down the road and we listened to the race, the 500. And, my crew chief was like, man, it'd be cool to drive one of these cars. So we stopped into Indy during May, and uh, I came around, and I was looking for an engineer, and I ran into Morris Nunn. I said, hey, Mo, I want to drive one of these uh, one of these cars. You know, I'd never drove on pavement before. I was a dirt dirt guy. And, uh, uh, you know, you talk funny. You don't look like, a, you know, an Indy car guy. Don't bother me. I, you know, I'm busy. I've got all this stuff. No, I, no seriously, I, I want to drive, I wanna drive a, a lights car. I'm not gonna drive you. I'm not gonna give you a try. I'm not gonna give you a try, you know, so go talk to my wife. So I went and spoke to, uh, to Catherine, and you know, I think it was uh, two years later, I was in an Indy car. Here it was not, listen, it sucked. I crashed in the first lap. Um, I wanted to drink beers instead of race, I think, that day. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a great place. I've been back a bunch of times, and um, you know, I think my days here are done, but it's always great to come and see everybody, and I think, it's funny because you look around the room, I don't know, you know, probably half of these guys, but you see them and it's like, we raced in the race together. And there's like, there's, some, there's, a, there's something, you feel like you have um, a connection with everybody in the room, even though you've never really spent time with them. So um, it brings a lot of people together. Uh, yeah, no, I, I love driving these old cars as well. That's uh, the track and the cars for me is, uh, is number one. I, I think all of us just the normal guys really that, uh, we're very privileged to uh, to become racing drivers uh, throughout the years and drive some very special pieces of machinery and to get to drive them again and to drive here um, you know brought me out of the uh, the house for sure you know it's very special he's kind of like PJ was saying you know these owners are 
you know, they take very good care, care of these cars. They love them. They love driving. And, I, and I'm pretty sure they love putting us in them, even though they might not come back looking the same way as they, uh, they started. But uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool and pretty cool to be here in the uh, same room as uh, this company, for sure. We got to respect the equipment here because these guys have got so much time and money and pride in their equipment. So we need to drive them as if it were our own <laughs> instead of like we used to drive the other car owners. I'm stoked uh, to drive tomorrow and um, hopefully get some laps in and never driven anything older than myself and uh, this will be a first. <laughs> uh, I had the opportunity, okay, to watch my friend Dick in my mirrors flying behind me at Riverside, okay? And so when I had the first race here last year, I had the same privilege of watching him spin out in corner one. On the first, I mean, everywhere I look, there's a Dick Simon, okay? And, uh, and he's always where he shouldn't be. <laughs> but uh, uh, this group is in incredibly important to our family. Our family has uh, uh, just adopted this, uh, this group in general. By the way, Bob, I was spinning out because you were crashing in front of me. <laughs> that could have been. That could have been. <laughs> but I was in front. If you would have like to, just for a moment. It's an amazing place, and every you know, somebody called me to run tricycle around here. I'd be here run, running, and I'm sure everybody else would be too. Yeah, we gotta, gotta put some extra struts on that puppy, don't we? <laughs> but thanks again, Tony, for having us. Really appreciate it. What makes the Indianapolis Motor Speedway what it is, is its history. Without our history, we're just another racetrack. And it's the men and women who have really risked everything to compete here, uh, to drink a bottle of milk, just to qualify on some levels is why it's special. So we owe each of you the thank you uh, as much as you guys were thanking us. So we're really excited about this. Tony, this is a terrific event. Mark Dill, who's here, Mark helped uh, Tony come up with this concept several years ago. The, the facility wasn't quite ready for it. Last year we had an opportunity to to execute it and make it happen. Uh, we are really excited to do number two, and we hope that this is a, a long-term event here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Our fans love it. I'm sure all of you have heard from it. The fan that comes here is completely different than the fan that comes to the Indy 500. It's the same people without all the drunk people that are just here to party. They are true race fans, and, then, and as you guys know, they know each of the histories of each of you. They want to talk to you. They have moments, and they can tell you when you qualified, where they were when they saw you qualify. It's just really fascinating to see that. So thank you so much for all you've done to make the Indianapolis Motor Speedway what it is. We're 352 days away from the 100th running, but without each of you and the efforts you put in here, we wouldn't be here today. So thanks a lot. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow in a great race.